Uh, my name is Evelyn Borrayo, and I am the Associate Director for Community Outreach and Engagement at the University of Colorado Cancer Center. I have been associated with the Cancer Center since 2000. Um, and then I did a sabbatical at the previous AMC or the original AMC in 2006 and 2008. And uh, I'm sorry, 2006 to 2007. And um, I was at Colorado State University and then joined the University of Colorado and recently um, the University of Colorado Cancer Center uh, as a professor in the Colorado School of Public Health. And I hold the Cancer Cure AMC Cancer Fund Endowed Chair for Cancer Prevention and Control. And my research is on cancer disparities. So uh, I'm Sean Davis. Um, I'm, a, I think, the newest recruit here. Uh, I joined the uh, University of Colorado in uh, January of this year. Um, I spent the last 15 years at the National Cancer Institute, and uh, prior to that, the Human Genome Research Institute. Um, I'm a pediatric oncologist. Uh, I don't see patients anymore, but um, and, and I, I miss it uh, immensely. But um, uh, my uh, research interest and um, um, the need, I think, for me uh, drew me to uh, data science and. So that leads to the titles that I'm carrying, the Associate Director of Bioinformatics and Data Science uh, for the Cancer Center. Um, I'm also uh, the uh, Deputy Director for the uh, newly established uh, Center for Health Artificial Intelligence at the School of Medicine. And uh, I'm also I'm in the Department of Medicine. And uh, I, I see from the, uh, the list of attendees that uh, I have the pleasure and privilege of uh, being in the presence of uh, uh, Ms. Trifkin and uh, potentially his family, who uh, uh, sponsored my uh, endowed chair in cancer informatics. And uh, we can talk about what that means as we go forward. Uh, but uh, it's, uh, it's a real pleasure to, to finally get the chance to uh, be virtually in the same place. Good evening. My name is Kahari Reed, and I serve as the Senior Director for Oncology Services here at UC Health. Uh, specifically for the Metro Denver region. I've been here at UC Health for just over three months. I uh, joined the team back in March. Uh, prior to UC Health, I um, worked, started my career at Johns Hopkins in Baltimore. So as you heard during the presentation, we have a nice contingency of um, faculty from Johns Hopkins and I represent the administrative side from Hopkins. I worked there for 10 years and had the pleasure of working for the hospital, the School of Medicine, the health system and Johns Hopkins International. After my time at Hopkins, I worked at Northwestern Memorial Hospital for five years, then went on to work at University of Illinois in Chicago, and most recently at the Loyola University Medical Center. And so I've spent the last 20 plus years in academic medicine. And the UC Health contribution to um, what we're talking about tonight, as Rich and the Dean alluded to, is that the health system provides the venue or the facility where we can provide patient care, teaching and research in a form of clinical trials. And so it is a pleasure to be um, speaking with you tonight and thank you for serving as benefactors um, for the important work that's done here at the um, Cancer Center. Next slide. I wanted to spend just a moment um, recapitulating some of the uh, discussion that we heard earlier about the, uh, the National Cancer Institute Designated Comprehensive Cancer Center, what that actually means. So um, just to give a sense of numbers, in the United States, there are about 6,000 hospitals. Um, only a small handful of those are so-called academic medical centers, so they're associated with um, teaching programs. Um, and then of those, there's a really small uh, group of uh, National Cancer Institute um, uh, comprehensive cancer centers. The University of Colorado Comprehensive Cancer Center is only one of 51 in the whole country and only one of uh, five or six in the um, uh, Rocky Mountain region. The reason these, things, these places are so special is um, because they have recognized experience and uh, expertise in all three areas um, that are kind of thought of as the, the um, 
pillars of um, uh, cancer control um, and, and treatment. One is clinical care, and that includes conducting clinical trials. Clinical trials um, are the way that we learn um, and, and uh, the way that we uh, adopt uh, new approaches to treating cancer. Um, that's done uh, with uh, a high level of expertise and integration in uh, conference cancer, cancer centers. Then there's basic research, which includes um, components of um, basic knowledge as well as applied research. So um, we need to understand uh, not just how better to treat cancer, um, but also how it develops and how it interacts with normal systems uh, and actually how it interacts with the environment, uh, things like um, uh, microbes that live inside us. Uh, all of that falls under this, this um, uh, umbrella of basic research. And then finally, there's cancer control, population health, and cancer prevention. So these three pillars um, sort of uh, fall uh, uh, in the same place at the same time in comprehensive cancer centers and give us a really integrated approach to uh, thinking about um, uh, cancer research, cancer control, um, and, uh, uh, and, and finally treatment. So uh, to add another layer here, the University of Colorado Cancer Center is also part of a National Comprehensive Care Network, NCCN, which is an alliance of these cancer centers that work to establish and develop uh, and deliver uh, gold standard uh, care to the United States. So um, not only is uh, the University of Colorado, uh, you know, part of this um, uh, club, I guess, uh, that uh, drives uh, cancer discovery, but it's also developing the standards and uh, the approaches to delivering that care um, across uh, the entire country through this NCCN. So it's, it's having been at the, at the National Cancer Institute in Bethesda in Washington, DC uh, for the last 15 years, I hadn't realized how important uh, the Conference Cancer uh, Center um, uh, program is. It's really the, the fundamental um, piece of how NCI um, uh, implements uh, its science across the country. Um, and there really isn't a, there aren't a lot of places uh, in the world that have something similar. Uh, so to be able to join something like this, a, a group like this, a, a mission like this is uh, uh, really special. It's much more special than I would have thought uh, had I, when I first joined. So let's go ahead and go to the next slide. And ultimately, what is important and significant about a comprehensive cancer center is how we can affect people. All the way from cancer prevention and control, uh, keeping people from developing cancer or detecting early uh, at a stage where, you know, cancer treatment has the best chance of being successful, all the way to treatment and survivorship. And uh, our patients are what makes our place very special. And I would like to introduce uh, Mr. Ed King, who is a previous cancer patient and now cancer survivor. Um, and he's also a very special friend and he is able to join us. Hey, Ed, thanks for joining. Hi, Evelyn. Thanks for, for inviting me. Yeah, uh, four years ago, or six years ago, excuse me, I was diagnosed uh, up in Fort Collins and chose to uh, come down on uh, what became a daily basis to, to the cancer center in, at Onshoots. I had uh, non-HPV head and neck cancer. Uh, the initial site was on the very tip of my tongue. And um, through uh, scans, it was determined it had metastasized into my neck, so I had surgeries on my tongue and on my neck. And then it was followed by uh, two months of daily radiation and a weekly uh, infusion of cetuximab, a radiation enhancer. At that time, I discovered that there really weren't any support groups for head and neck cancer in Colorado. Uh, there was one small one in Denver, but not affiliated with, uh, with your center. And I found uh, other survivors who were just sort of wandering in the wilderness and we coalesced 
And that head and neck cancer support group has now gone on for six years on a monthly basis. Uh, most recently, as in the slide, I have uh, been chosen, uh, I volunteered and then was chosen to participate in a study where they will inject a gene into my salivary gland to determine if it will regenerate. That's a study going on at Bethesda at the National Institutes of Health. This uh, very proudly, I can say the team that I worked with at Onshoots was superb. And they did all of the things we heard about earlier, working together, talking with my wife and myself. Um, there was you know, a complete understanding of what we were going to do, uh, a mutual decision. So um, that's a, a very quick, summary of my experience. Um, I'm really focused both in Colorado and nationally on helping survivors, both short-term and long-term, because as more of us survive, we are finding more problems, mostly related to treatments, things like broken jaw bones after 10 or 15 years, uh, clogging of your carotid arteries, simply due to radiation after 15 or 16 years. So there's a lot more for survivors to do and help that needs to be provided. Uh, thanks, Evelyn. Well, thank you very much. I could have not presented you any better than you did yourself. Uh, but I will just add that um, Ed is a good example of somebody who's affected by cancer, but turns it into an experience to benefit others. He's also in our community advisory council. He's very involved in the community, knows what's happening. The one thing he uh, didn't tell you is that his support group is perhaps one of the largest, not only in Colorado, but um, the nation. He's really able to, to reach people and, and they stay for years because they really need that support and want to help others. Next slide, please. Thank you, Ed. So I would just like to briefly introduce you to some key initiatives. So the Cancer Center engaged in its strategic planning uh, early in 2000. And we were able to identify three, uh, five key initiatives. Uh, one is driving cancer discovery and innovation. And you heard some of that through Dr. Schulich's presentation. Um, leading patient center care, and Kahari will be talking more about that, but that is another key initiative to partner with UC Health to leading patient center care. And one that I lead is reducing health disparities. And I will be talking about some of the disparity populations that we have in Colorado, but engaging community and organizations in helping us achieve this particular key initiative. And um, fourth is training the next generation of uh, providers, clinicians, researchers um, that will help us move um, forward our mission of conquering cancer together. And the last one is position our cancer center for ultimate performance by collaborating with other organizations uh, in the state, but also across the country um, to improve cancer outcomes for uh, patients. Next slide, please. So philanthropy is extremely important to the work that we do here um, within the CU Cancer Center and at UC Health. When you heard me describe earlier um, that we represent an academic medical center, academic medical centers uh, at their core provide patient care, teaching, and research. And research is, um, again, very valuable to the patients and the communities that we serve because they are, um, are vehicles where we can discover cures and treatments to disease. And so from a hospital perspective, um, that, that research um, can be advanced through some of the um, work done in competitive research grants. And these grants um, are made possible by philanthropy. Uh, these grants allow us to enhance the Cancer Center's research position, to prioritize the research and align it with the UCC strategic plan, and to advance the research priorities. 
This last bullet is extremely important. And again, this is why philanthropy is so valuable. It allows us to evaluate and fund the research priorities um, with these internal competitive grant mechanisms where we're able to provide funding um, to new ideas to uh, spur new discoveries in academic medicine. The other um, component that I have here is related to patient care. Um, patient care related philanthropic benefits include support for uncompensated care and financial assistance. Um, as you can imagine, with many cancers and the multiple types of treatment they receive um, and the insurance programs that patients are um, carry or have, they could include co-pays and co-insurance, which can be um, very difficult for patients and their families um, to fund and to pay for. And so philanthropy con makes contributions um, to allow patients to um, not have the financial burden of seeking oncology care. In addition to financial assistance, um, oftentimes our patients need transportation assistance with transportation and lodging. Because the Cancer Center is a regional referral center where we receive patients from across the state of Colorado, as well as the neighboring states, um, it is sometimes a burden for patients to travel um, to arrive at the Anschutz Medical Campus and or to stay um, close to campus while they're in treatment. And philanthropy allows us to um, take that burden away from families. The next bullet here is around building and expansion. We believe that we deliver a quality cancer program for um, Denver, the region, and across multiple states. And because of that, we're growing in market share. And so we're constantly evaluating our capacity and our ability to expand. And philanthropic investments allow us to think through how to add a wing or to add a new building to campus. And as we, um, again, continue to grow, this will become even more important to the work um, uh, that we do here and hopefully uh, will be supported by the philanthropic community. Next slide, please. When we think about competitive research um, grants, again, these are internal. We're identifying um, young investigator, senior investigators, and also those investigators that are mid, um, kind of mid tenure or mid career um, clinicians. And so this is an example of a program that I was familiar with prior to coming to UC Health. We had some philanthropists who made donations um, to our academic medical center, and we created these three awards. And so the first one here is what we call the priority research initiatives. And it was there to differentiate the academic medical center to improve patient care and attract additional funding uh, research, researchers and patients and enrollees. This was a large amount that was targeted for the senior faculty members. And so those associate professors and full professors, and we allocated $200,000 per year over three years. The next um, award that we provided was what we called the Innovation Award. The purpose is very similar, but the allocation was a little less. This was a single year award up to $50,000. And the last one is the young investigators. These may be your instructors or assistant professors uh, who have an idea but need an investment to collect the data so they can eventually apply for <clears throat> a larger grant. And this was a single year up to $25,000. Next slide, please. When we think about philanthropy and we think about the investments in these seed grants, it's always important to think about what is the return on investment when we think about advancing medical science. And so here are a few bullets in terms of how we evaluate that. And so the key bullet here is the first one. We look at the external funding that's attracted to these researchers from government and private resources. And um, with the 
program that I was a part of, we invested $7 million in seed grants and we received $44 million in external grants to the organization. And so that's about a seven fold increase in terms of what we um, invested in. And this was a combination of what was awarded and pending at the time. The next thing when we think about um, our return on investment is advancing the reputation, advancing medical knowledge. And one of the best vehicles to do that is through peer review publications. And from the investment from philanthropy, we had 143 publications and peer review articles that had national and international audiences of scientists. Next. In addition to the publications, it's important to do presentations regionally, nationally, and international. Um, and through these investments, we were able to catalog 82 presentations that were done around the world. The last bullet is patents. And so as we make discoveries, sometimes those discoveries are unique to the researcher or the institution that invested in that discovery, and we can obtain a patent. And those patents um, can be um, a perpetual source of revenue to reinvest into um, the program, so into the cancer center. Next slide, please. And then I would like just to take a few minutes to talk about some of the disparities. Uh, well, Colorado, in Colorado, cancer is uh, the number one uh, cause of death in, among chronic diseases over um, cardiovascular diseases. And um, the incidence overall is lower in the state. Uh, cancer affects us significantly, but more so to some populations that we call disparity populations. And these are populations that um, if all things were equal, they wouldn't suffer from higher incidence more mortality or uh, late stage disease. What the map that you see there is produced by the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment and shows a disparity index with the darker blue indicating where there are worse disparities, where there is a higher incidence mortality and late stage disease from some of the main cancers, including lung, uh, breast cancer, um, and colorectal cancer. Those are the three cancers that you see represented there. And in Colorado, it is in our rural southeastern um, counties that have those worst disparities. And these counties are also affected by high poverty rates. Um, not only in those counties, but across the state, low-income patients have the worst cancer outcomes. Um, less likely to survive cancer, less likely to have access to treatment and um, all, all, the, uh, all the measures that we have of cancer outcomes, those of low-income poverty um, backgrounds tend to fare worse in Colorado. And that disparity is significant because um, compared to other states, there's a, a, a wide uh, range of, of you know, differences between the wealthy and um, those who are low income in Colorado. In Colorado, Hispanics also constitute 22% of the population um, and but they have worse disparities compared to other Hispanics, not only um, you know, compared to whites, but also to other Hispanics in the US. They tend to have higher incidence, mortality, and late stage uh, of lung, breast, and colorectal cancers. And then, next please. <clears throat> 